have oh kylie skin is sold for 600 million dollars you heard about that that's quite cool news i thought that was awesome to see happy for the girl and happy in general just um the numbers are just the numbers are what everyone should be happy about i think it goes to show just how big and limitless the beauty industry is i think now people are maybe taking it a bit more seriously maybe off the back of the um jeffree star documentary with shane dawson the fact that he was able to document the entire process of um launching the collaboration um with shane dawson how to make money um, how to position yourself how to market and they saw quite quickly how you can turn somebody that's an influencer on youtube align them with a product that makes sense with their audience market it well and it can sell out in minutes and now people are saying that okay cool this market is booming and very much willing and ready to buy more products off of more individuals right um who else has launched the makeup line i think billy that girl from stranger things has got one right um 11 she's got a, a, a kind of a skincare brand out there so essentially if as long as you're in that space and it's authentic and you give a crap you can start yourself start one too i'm really looking forward to seeing who's going to be the first male skincare beauty or the first straight male um icon that can kind of take that to the masses because i think there are still a lot of men i don't know if it's a, a view or if it's a hesitation you probably won't buy a skincare brand that is essentially being pushed out by a openly gay dude i don't know why that is maybe it might maybe because they're afraid to make the makeup or the skincare routines might be a little bit too heavy it might be a bit too makeup y maybe the average dude wants something that looks doesn't doesn't look too like it doesn't look too much on the skin so maybe the introduction of imagine i've always assumed that maybe someone like cristiano cristiano ronaldo could probably be a good um lightning rod to kind of get that movement started and kind of open the doors and hopefully everyone else would uh, run through the floodgates because he's essentially like you know a pretty uh masculine alpha male who also really takes care of himself works out a lot eats clean and you know is really into his i'm assuming into his um skincare fragrances haircuts all that sort of stuff so he could probably be a good lightning rod for it going forward but this kylie jenner skin or this kylie skin thing is really really awesome and really goes to show just how much money there is in this industry and how it also goes to show um, her entrepreneurial business acumen is operating on a really high level because i really i remember saying to a few people it looked like from the it looked from the beginning of when the brand started. It may be because of the nature of the packaging, it being just like you know, uh, like a sort of like baby pink, soft pink colors, you know, zero branding. But it always seemed to me that she was doing this. The brand was always an exercise in not branding, but an exercise in business acumen. She wanted to show people that she could. She wanted to show the investors out there, or people who are who she wants to maybe align herself with, <coughs> that she can actually do this. So the best way to prove it is to put your own money up. Um, you know have a really uh streamlined team run the business completely off your laptop have all the other stuff that you don't need to do in-house outsourced sell it all to direct to consumer on your own website and then once you're able to show that the demand is there the interest is there you make the money you make the sales you can then go and sell it to another company and allow them to go do what they want with it similar to what happened with joe malone joe malone i think got ousted out of her company for the most part i think she got pushed out of it but you know the idea is that you can you can show the concept works. Maybe it's ideal not to do it with your name so you don't have the name. It's not kind of devalued and sold on, but, you know, it's only Kylie's skin. And then you can allow people to just take that and kind of, you know, people trust the brand and they can take that on. And then, of course, if you let people know, oh, yeah, she still has 49% um, um, interest in the brand. And over the years, that percentage will decrease, decrease. The most she starts cashing out of her shares. But people will still have the idea that she's associated with the brand. So essentially, the brand can live on without Kylie quite easily. So this is a, this is an article from Fashion Law that gives a bit more background into the whole deal. The title is, uh, Cotty is taking a majority stake in Kylie Jenner's three-year-old beauty brand for $600 million. So imagine three years, three years since she's launched it, and it's already worth $600 million, which again goes to prove for all the haters out there that were not very keen on it, in the three years time that you've been hating on Kylie's skin, what have you done? No, no one's saying that you should go out there and build your own multinational uh, multi-billion dollar generating company but this is one of the key representation of sometimes hating is a waste of time because in a three years time that you could have been you're writing comments leaving hateful comments spreading propaganda and just waiting for her to flop and to cancel herself or waiting for her demise this brand has gone from being a zero to being worth 600 or not even worth she sold the stake of the company for 600 million so that means if she was able to sell what the whole company it'll be a billion dollars worth or something like that if you you know just let's do times two because they bought just over half that's insane for a three-year-old brand that's insane 
So again, hating is a waste of time. If you don't like it, guess what you do? You just ignore it and you invest in the brands that you do like. Promote the brands that you're interested in. Don't waste your time promoting like in a de facto way or in an underhand way something you don't like because it's only going to make people more interested. That's essentially what happens. But anyway, it's a story for another day. The article. Koti is taking a majority stake in Kylie Cosmetics, a deal that values the star's buzzy beauty brand at $1.2 billion. The New York headquarters headquarters beauty um, giant is set to pay $600 million for a controlling stake of the 22-year-old, 3-year-old cosmetic startup, betting that the young celebrity's brand, which is expected to bring in $200 million in sales this year. So they're going to invest $600 million in it, which means, effectively, if they're smart and if they kind of, um, you know, are able to introduce uh, some other product lines, they can essentially get their money back within three years. Answer. Again, so much growth in this industry. You need to pay attention. Pay attention. Um, which better to bring this year. Um, so, can can revive Coty's struggling beauty business, which is based in Covergirl and Max Factor, according to Wall Street Journal. This is where the growth of the market is, says Coty Finance Chief Executive Pierre-André Dorsey said on Monday, referring to the emergence of a burgeoning celebrity face, social media-centric segment in the 500 billion uh global beauty sec- sector uh with the built-in basis of consumers by their fans celebrities certainly have a well-established advantage over new brands in many cases even established ones which is in which is at least part of why the likes of lady gaga who launched her house labs this summer with the help of amazon and Rihanna, who teamed up LVMH to a Fenty brand, and others have success in the bringing beauty products to the market in recent years. In addition, the luxury of launching products to an already established and often highly engaged pool of consumers, celebrity founders have powerful marketing tools right in their pockets, free of charge, which is this, this smartphone right here. Um, celebrity endorsements through million-dollar social media posts have the ability to reach consumers faster than any traditional marketing campaign, says Joseph Magnakaka or Manaka, CEO of cosmetic licensing giant Massage Envy, and dust celebrities are vying to leverage their status in order to cash in on the lucrative beauty and skincare market. So again, cool, amazing stuff, right? And then something that kind of rounds up this whole issue that I was really interested in was this amazing tweet by this tech investor called uh, Web. He's on social. Uh, you can just find him at twitter.com forward slash web. But he, he wrote a really cool uh, tweet that I retweeted l- earlier on or last or yet last night that really kind of summarized it really cool in a really cool way, right? It says the following. Uh, Kylie Jenner recap. Number one, use their own capital to launch Kylie Jenner skin. Two, hired six people. Remember when they did the whole office tours, you showed the office and the team, really streamlined company, as most beauty brands are, because essentially you can outsource loads of the manufacturing and packaging and stuff and shipping to other people. So you essentially need to kind of run the company. You can run the company essentially off your own laptop, especially if you're an influencer and you're teaming up with a brand. Number three, paid close to zero in ads. Of course, she has an advantage in that respect because it's Kylie Jenner. She has a very active, she has a very, you know, she's got some of the highest fo- no yeah she's got loads of followers on social media across you know most of them on twitter and instagram um so she's able to um talk to them directly but even if you didn't have the followers that kaya jenna had you could easily um you know uh, reach out to influencers who do have the active who do have that captive audience put the product in front of their audience and hopefully have that be a way for you to kind of uh get the money coming in that way number four leverage her media trends of course number five leverage supply partners of course number six build a 1.2 billion dollar brand uh seven now 600 million dollar richer and eight she did it in five years so from inception to delivery, five-year process. She's turned a brand, you know, invested her own capital into it. So again, she don't have any outside investment, which is kind of something that I think Gary Vee says often, leaving money on the table. I think that's how the premise comes from. This idea that you should start small, build your company with your own money, your own sweat and tears, actually be a practitioner, do the work. Uh, don't just talk and hypothesize about it. Don't outsource it to an agency. Try to make it work with your own money, with your own capital. Don't take any cheap um, shortcuts to kind of get further ahead. Do the hard work and the grunt so that when it does come around to you maybe needing investment to take your brand to the next level or if you just want to cash out and do other things, your brand will be worth so much because you've shown that the concept works. You've shown that the you've shown the proof of concept. You've actually shipped your item. People want it. There's customers there paying for it and it can function on its own dime. So if a brand comes in and walks in and pays you off six hundred million dollars, they are they are safe in the hope and the assumption that they can make their money back because your money your brand's already making money without you doing that much. So imagine if they press the button on their huge big corporation machine, that brand's gonna go boom boom. It might not last forever, but what they want to do is make their money back, and of course they're gonna make their money back. Come on, man. So yeah, um, cool to see. Um, 
And then obviously he ended the tweet by saying, above isn't the result of fame alone, which I definitely agree with. Because the first retort you hear people saying, oh, but she's a Jenna, she already started rich. Yeah, but how many rich people do you know? You have to look at um, the rich kids of Instagram to see the amount of kids out there who don't do anything with their fame. They don't need to. Of course, I don't. I, no one's judging anybody, but there's plenty of rich kids out there who don't do anything with their fame. They don't leverage their fame to build businesses or to employ people or to just in general, you know, just be part of culture in that regard. They just enjoy their money, uh, enjoy their trust fund spend it and live life she's actually put herself in the firing line launched a brand that was not received that well when it launched right there were some really bad reviews of the skincare products online by loads of social media and influencer types right they didn't really like it at first so she took a lot of bullets took a lot of arrows rid the way was able to maybe you know go out to the drawing board correct some of the formula I'm not too sure if it's better now than it was before but again it didn't come for just it wasn't plain sailing it was a difficult process so you know uh, credit to her man credit to her credit to her and great to see and hopefully this is a trend that we get to see um going forward and i think you don't need to be as a, a big of a of a celebrity or a icon to kind of take lessons from this i think it can apply to most people like i said investing in yourself not taking an investment in the beginning making sure you can prove that your business is viable and people actually want your product or service and then you know going from there but yeah cool to see man cool to see i'm really um, invigorated by that story as you can tell from my enthusiasm so 